I will uh, spend a few minutes talking about uh, quantum uh, education at the master's level, uh, the national scene, and then since I think at uh, Madison we've been the people who've had the most chance to make mistakes, I'll say something about uh, what those were and what we've learned. So uh, here's how things got started. Uh, at Wisconsin, we noticed that a decade or so ago, uh, our PhDs who were doing quantum computing research uh, actually um, uh, were in great demand. This kind of woke us up a little bit. And then uh, well, we found that uh, the larger companies, as you know, began to do serious research at about the same time. And uh, we thought that if uh, these large groups were, were moving now from research to development, they would be, um, uh, they'd be hiring. And not only that, when the groups get bigger, they're going to need not just people who are completely research oriented, they're gonna need other people and that'd be the master's program people. So in 2019, we admitted our first class and um, well, um, things have gone at the national level as we expected. These are the job postings. Um, plotted as a function of time here from quantum computing report. So the demand does seem to be there and very much growing. Here's just a quick overview of the master's programs uh, now in operation in the US. Uh, let's see, I've got six listed here. You'll notice that there's a lot of diversity at this point in the approaches that people are taking. Uh, they're done in different departments. Uh, physics is probably the single biggest, but spread over uh, ECE, applied math, and so forth. Uh, the uh, degrees have different names. They are um, also done on sort of different uh, time scales, if you like. Uh, ours is a one-year program. Uh, others are two-year, uh, and uh, also some are trying to combine that, for example, University of Rhode Island, with an undergraduate program. So there are, I think, uh, people doing different kinds of experiments here. Uh, finally, um, I would like to say something about tuition. I think this is a big issue. We're hoping to have uh, a diverse workforce in this area, and I think a big obstacle to that is high tuition. So uh, let me pivot now to what we've been doing in Madison. The uh, uh, goals have been to attract and educate students from all STEM backgrounds. So this is not something we would normally try to do in a physics department, but we decided that uh, in quantum computing, the amount of, say, quantum mechanics background that's needed is relatively, uh, relatively small. If you can do linear algebra, we can teach you a little bit of measurement theory, uh, tensor products, and so on, and you can get to the point where you can learn something serious about quantum computing. So we tried to give a well-rounded introduction um, we start with quantum circuits, quantum algorithms, quantum error correction. We go on to quantum hardware, decoherence. Uh, try to cover all those basics. Our program tries to get students through in one year. We think that's attractive to people who want to hit the job market right away. It's turned out, possibly because of COVID, that uh, a surprising number of students have decided they want to do the PhD instead. One year program, it's, uh, you know, it's a little less it's a little less clear uh, that one-year program is, is right for that. The timing is pretty tough for those students, but nevertheless, many of them have chosen that. Our program tries to give substantial lab experience. Uh, we found, particularly in talking with prospective employers, that this is something they really want to see in their applicants. Um, and so we do try to give significant uh, lab experience. One thing, uh, we also try to do is to give them exposure to research, and I'll say a little bit more about that. Uh, okay, um, so this is information which was uh, in a short form on the uh, first slide. So we have an intense curriculum. It's based in physics. Uh, you are allowed to take electives outside in CS or ECE or math, and many people do. Uh, this is a self-financing program. This was not my idea. When I uh, raised the, the possibility of having a master's program at Wisconsin, uh, I was told that the only way you can now do such new programs 
is if they uh, entirely pay for themselves. So we have to charge uh, pretty high tuition, $1,600 a credit, which comes to about 50K total for the students over, over the course of the year. And uh, we have to finance all of the teaching, all of the labs and so forth uh, out of that. So that's not good for diversity. And I, we haven't solved this problem in Wisconsin. We have to try to figure out somehow uh, to be able to uh, offer a program which is uh, a little bit more reasonably priced for students who don't have the resources to come up with 50K. <clears throat> All right, so um, in order to get students into the job market, we offer them various things. They have uh, speakers that they meet who come in from industry. We have online industry panels. We offer them help with their CVs. Um, all these sorts of things. Uh, Things that in physics we actually don't do very much, but uh, engineering departments typically are much better at that, at that, so we try to learn from them. And um, well, it's been an experience for me uh, learning how to do that, to, to, to try to uh, give students a leg up in getting a job in industry. And uh, well, um, that's an ongoing process. I think we have uh, met it reasonably well at Wisconsin. Uh, labs, if you want to start up a master's program, uh, this, is, this is something which is a pretty big project. Do we need to have labs which are relevant to quantum computing? So yeah, at Wisconsin, we're fortunate we have a number of people who work on different platforms for quantum computing. So we were able to tap in for that, into that. And uh, I've been very grateful to the faculty who have put the time into helping us develop a uh, specialized lab course for these master's students. Okay, um, the biggest uh, thing that we discovered over the course of the first year or so was that students really wanted exposure to research. Uh, this uh, came from the students, but we also found that employers insist on it. Employers very often are interested in kind of softer skills, which research actually teaches you. So how to work in a team, how to communicate your results, how to plan a project, how to push a project through to completion. All of these things are learned much better in a research environment than sitting in a classroom. So uh, this actually went okay in the first year because of the fact that we didn't have that many students. And so individual faculty could take them on and do that. This, uh, this um, semester for the first time we're, we have a special one credit course which introduces them to all the research that's going on in the department. The faculty come in and do that. And then uh, we try to form the students into teams, pair them up for projects. This reduces the number of ideas that you have to come up with for research, reduces the total burden on the faculty. So uh, we'll see how that'll work. That's uh, something that uh, I'm doing right now. Uh, so um, again, I'm grateful to my, to, to, to my faculty, but one of the things you have to think about uh, if you're going to start a master's program like this is uh, the increase in faculty workload that this causes. Uh, it'd be nice to hire new people. That's sometimes difficult at a university. So you have to figure out some way to compensate them. Uh, there is some money to do that because we do have that tuition money that we're collecting. Okay, so um, here's the diversity challenge. Um, so uh, in the first year, only had one underrepresented minority. Uh, only two, what does that say? <laughs> Aunt Wally. Only two women have enrolled in our first three years. And only 20% of the applications come from women. Not quite sure why that is, but this is another problem we have to think about. We're thinking about trying to figure out more financial uh, incentives and increase marketing in uh, to uh, demographics uh, which are underrepresented, uh, underrepresented. There's a very diverse level of student preparation, particularly because you know we don't limit ourselves to physics undergrads. So we have to uh, uh, we have to figure out ways to do that. Um, uh, advising helps a lot. If you can really pair up student with a faculty advisor, uh, this really helped, that that has turned out to be pretty effective. And as I said, we take advantage of the fact that they don't need that much quantum mechanics for, uh, for this. 
So uh, in our case, uh, we have this accelerated one-year schedule. It's pretty stressful for the students. Um, we have dedicated office space for them. Again, our department did that. Uh, very grateful for that. That really helps them to build, to, to build teams. And then we, we have to mesh with the uh, other students who are taking courses that overlap with these students. That's also a very tricky thing. Okay. Questions? Oh, I guess we're not doing questions, huh? Okay. All right. Thank you.